Hi ho and welcome back to the channel. Today, of course, being a Friday. You guys know how I feel about Friday. I love Friday. So today we're going to be doing a quick warm up on Bristol board using the Collie Race pencil made by Prismacolor. These are great <clears throat> because they've got uh, very little artifacts in the, um, the pencil lead itself and it's more or less a um, an erasable color pencil. So if you think about <laughs> it's color race, it says it in the title. So today we're just gonna be doing some warm up faces. Not gonna get too in depth um, with it, and uh, you know I'm gonna show you the process that I utilize to create character faces. So shapes, character shapes, shape language. I don't know if you've heard any of this in your endeavors to become an artist or illustrator, but shape like shape language is very important whenever you're designing characters because the shapes are really what dictate the quick read. Um, for those of you who are just coming into the channel and don't understand a lot of these terminologies, uh, <clears throat> it's pretty simple. You know, whenever you look at a stop sign, you see that particular shape and that color and you've been sort of preconditioned to determine that that is indeed um, a warning, not a warning, but a stop sign. So then you get to something like a yellow triangle and the yellow triangle is typically uh, a warning. Um, anything with sharp edges, you know, such as a porcupine or a um, bristled caterpillar, you'll see those out in the wild. Um, all of those really kind of cater to, again, that shape language and how we as human beings have sort of um, been quote unquote trained and it's in us to really recognize certain things based upon their shape. And it's no different whenever it comes to people. So a lot of times uh, in movies, you'll see certain characters that will have an archetype that, or shape language or shape that really cater to what they're trying to portray as a character. Uh, case in point, if anybody's ever seen Emperor's New Groove, Yzma is very sharp. She's got sharp edges, her outfits, and she's very slender and... Uh, you know, doesn't use her muscles, you know, to get things done. And she's got a larger head and she's got pointy, you know, features. Whereas, and, and she's portrayed as the villain. And then you have somebody like Kronk. Kronk being the lovable large oaf who is also the muscle for Yzma. And basically, you know, he, he's got large, a very large chin. He's got a small brain, small head, and you know, very large upper body so he can use his arms and a small lower body again to cater to that <clears throat> that type of character that he portrays in the uh, in the movie. Um, another good example would probably be if anybody's ever seen The Incredibles, you have uh, the the um, the antagonist. So you have uh, the, the bad guy. I think his name is Syndrome and his hair is very sharp right and again he's kind of larger um and he's and it's proportionately speaking he doesn't really have a lot of muscles he's a little weak but he's got a very large forehead and it again really caters to that idea that he's smart and you know with his hair being as sharp as it is, as it is he is a villain so what i'm doing right now is i'm just I'm basically laying down this particular character is going to be kind of a weak <clears throat> a weak uh, character. Even though he does have a strong chin, we're going to give him a, a very weak uh, bottom lip. So he's going to have a little bit of an overbite. Going in here. And his eyes are going to be, you know, uh, a quick read, which means he's going to be not upset, but he's going to be worried about something. So worry you have that furled brow that goes up not furled you get that brow that goes up with the eyebrows you know eyebrows being the sort of telltale sign of exactly what somebody is thinking you know i've always wondered what are eyebrows there for and that's to emote they're there to emote they were designed to emote and those of us <laughs> that don't have a lot of eyebrows that's me, minor thin and wispy. <clears throat> a lot of times I can be sitting there and even though I might have a lot of emotion inside, since I don't have my brow, my eyebrows that are, you know, showing how I feel, a lot of people don't know how I feel. Okay, so then we're gonna go to the eyes. 
Okay. over slightly. Hopefully you can see that a little bit better. Again, whenever I'm doing this, I'm thinking, you know, emotion, 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 emotion. <clears throat> Let's have that bottom lip come down. Maybe he's worried about something somebody said. little bit of baggage going on there. Okay. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of erasing here. I think the wider neck is giving him a little bit too much confidence. So we're going to shorten his neck, make it a little bit weaker. And He's balding, so we're going to give him a little bit of a comb over here. <clears throat> here we go. It is, of course, allergy season up here in the mountains, so if you hear me clear my throat every once in a while, that's why. I had somebody a while back really question, they're like, man, if you're having allergies and stuff like that, take an allergy pill. Trust me, I do. <laughs> but sometimes it just doesn't work. Okay, placing... Stuff in the eye. Okay, so you see in the drawing, the context of the drawing, I've established, you know, he's not really a strong character. He's kind of balanced. He doesn't really have a huge brain, so he's not that smart. He's got an overbite with a, a groveling uh, lower lip, but then he's got a stronger chin. So you see that he's kind of an average Joe. This is my kind of my average Joe, you know, non caricatured character. And caricature being an exaggeration. You ever been to like a theme park or something and they caricature people? So that's what this is. This is sort of like a middle of the road caricature of your average Joe. Your average guy. His name could even be Joe. So let's go ahead and give him a little bit. Maybe he's... There we go. I actually saw somebody like this recently. We went out to eat for our wedding anniversary and our waiter was like this and he had a little mustache. So maybe I'll give him just a little mustache. There we go. And you've probably seen this guy in a crowd. You've seen this guy, you know, on the cover of a book. He's not, he's not a hero. He's not anybody significant. And it's just one of those, you know, one of those character types that even though it doesn't have the excitement as maybe a villain or a hero or something like that, it is important that you understand the differences um, between all of these character, character types and how the quick read reads. So that makes sense. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now we're going to get on to maybe... Hey, not a villain. I don't want to do a villain again. Well, maybe we'll do a villain. But an older villain. Let's do an older villain. And we're going to have him face in the opposite direction. Okay, so villains. A lot of times in, in movies and in, uh, in books and stories, there'll be certain... Uh, how do I put it? You have the classic archetype of, of a villain, you know, sharp edges, you know, a uh, furled brow that really shows his, his evilness and maybe uh, greasiness or something like that. It just depends on what type of character that you're trying to go for uh, in that moment. But a lot of times they'll put something different. What does that mean? That means, what do I mean? What do I mean by that? It means that maybe that particular character has a flaw. <clears throat> Other than being a villain, the character maybe has something that goes against the villainy, you know, he'll, that humanizes that particular character. And a lot of times directors and, and, and writers will do this 
to help develop the character because it you know that that whole idea that you have a villain that eventually turns good <clears throat> and uh a lot of times you'll have maybe that particular villain or ruffian or whoever will basically you know he'll have a hobby maybe the hobby is collecting unicorn statues or he'll uh similar to what happened in in the um the guardians galaxy you had the main uh Ravager, and he, he liked these little little characters. He wanted to put them, he wanted to put them on his desk and, and put them on his seat, in his spaceship, and that humanized him. And eventually, he became, um, you know, even though he was sort of a, a, a sort of a villain, he was also a daddy, and he loved his son. So that again, that's one of those fun little quips that you don't think will be a, a, a cool little idea but it, it really is it's just something cool so this guy a little bit older a little bit greasier okay so let's have it here I I made this a little bit too big at the bottom let's go ahead and erase that okay I can't believe I'm already hungry. If you feel that growling, that's my stomach. I had oatmeal this morning, and I don't typically eat oatmeal uh, for breakfast. <laughs> no, I was out of eggs. And, man, lo and behold, I'm hungry. It's 9.15. That's horrendous. Okay, so this guy, a little bit older, a little bit seedier. Maybe he works at a dog track or something along those lines. And you can already tell with this little hair in the back, he's his hairdo. He's got a larger brain cavity, <clears throat> but we're going to give him a weak chin. So let's give him this. And then we're going to come out here and a weak chin, very weak chin, but a strong jaw, weak chin, strong jaw. Let's go ahead and have that kind of pooch out and you've got right here okay so let's have that line come down I'm trying to find the line of his a little bit older so we're gonna have that skin kind of droop a little bit and then we're gonna have that shirt come out there we go so on and so forth okay and here's the other shirt comes up and down and in we can color that in Okay, a little bit of erasing going on. Good, good, good. Okay, so this character probably works at the dog track. Whenever you're familiar with dog racing, you know, that has to do with, you know, betting and stuff on animals. Similar with the with the horse track. But the horse track, <clears throat> you know, this is what I was talking about earlier. The horse track has a degree of dignification to it, you know. Richer people with their hats and they're sitting in the audience and they're betting. And even though they're betting, it's it's more or less a dignified, quote-unquote, sport and activity. You know, the horses cost millions of dollars. Um, you know, the breeding and all of that. So there's a dignification to it. Whereas this, him working, you know, maybe he's at the dog track. You know, dogs are a dime a dozen, even though I love dogs. Uh, you know, he, he makes his living off of, uh, you know, betting, small time. He's, he's kind of a small time thug. So let's go ahead, have that baggage, and then it's got his eye that comes here. <clears throat> All right. Okay. here and then he's he's lost his temper a few times and he's squinted a lot <clears throat> maybe he's a poker player as well I don't know he's lost a few hairs so he also has a little bit of a comb over upstairs okay and then he's got his toothpick Okay, let's go ahead and put in his 
is iris pupil. And we're going to color in this eyebrow. Just got this dark eyebrow right here. And what I'm doing now is just flushing out some of those areas that you know I just really quickly drew in to help establish and you know that 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 drawing roadmap. So you know you look at this and you're like okay so I, I can definitely read that that's pretty simple. Let's go ahead and do this. Wrinkle, wrinkle, wrinkle. Okay. It's got kind of a mullet, I guess he would. You know. Comes in. He's got kind of a pointed part. So even that, that little element that right there kind of pushed him over to now he's definitely sinister. And you don't know quite where to place him other than he's a little greasy. A greasy. Greasy, untrustworthy, you know, all these adjectives definitely are things you consider. And I haven't even gotten to his outfit. Maybe he wears a suit, but it's a suit, like a brown suit, and his tie is a clip-on, and, uh, you know, his, side is, his suit maybe got from Goodwill or it's a hand-me-down, and he wears it all the time. So you understand where I'm coming from whenever it comes to character development. All these little things that add to the sum of the whole... <clears throat> some for the whole and maybe he's got maybe maybe these sideburns because he hasn't let him go he hasn't let go of the 70s yet he's got these sideburns and then maybe he's a smoker too so you got to give him some of these creases that happens smokers i definitely notice whenever i'm out and about and i'm i do a lot of character uh, character reading i do a lot of character development um, whenever i look at people you know, I kind of take mental photographs and certain things that definitely you can tell that they do, even though they're not doing it at that moment, you can tell a smoker because you see certain, you know, aspects, you know, the smoke definitely affects the skin. It affects the nose. It also affects the lips and you can see around the creases of the mouth because they're, you know, they're gripping on to that, you know, the cigarette or the cigar and you can definitely see that. So here we go. That's it. Okay. So we're going to do probably two more really quick. The reason why I'm doing this this morning um, for you guys is because I definitely, you know, want to do drawings as much as I can, but also I have my computer updating. So, <laughs> so you're getting me this morning as my computer updates. So let's go ahead and do a educator. So educators typically have large cranial masses and then, you know, again, we come down, they're a little bit older since they've, you know, they're in education, higher education, and they have to have some type of stability in terms of uh, presence. So we're going to give them a nice collared shirt, right? And then you have kind of that classic old, not old man, but smart man. So let's go ahead and do the ears large ears because they've done a lot of listening it, it, you know it, it sometimes it's one of those things where you're like that that statement he it doesn't make sense in the context of human beings your ears don't get larger whenever you listen but whenever you're doing caricatures a lot of times it's you're you're exaggerating so we're going to give him some jowls jowls <laughs> and sort of a contemptuous chin contemptuous being <laughs> You, sir, have have uh, upset the balance of 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 my educational prowess, you know. And then he's he doesn't he doesn't do a lot of smiling, so because he's constantly reading books. But he has a strong chin, right? Comes up, and then since he's a little bit older, these jowls right here, jowls that have sagged. The skin is, skin is sagging. Okay. So then you have the brow that comes around and you have the nose that's going to support some heavy glasses. Okay, let's give him a schnoz. A schnoz is a little bit different than a nose. That schnoz is just large, right? And we've got these long, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in. 
We got the huge glasses. They're on his nose. And the other one's over here. And then I've got this. Again, you see how light I'm drawing? I'm just putting in the roadmap right now. <laughs> okay, so he's, he's kind of tired. He's kind of tired of the education system. You know, he's kind of checked out. But you know, there's a wealth of wisdom in there. If, if some kid comes along and starts tapping that, that, you know, that, that massive amount of wisdom, he's going to have the ability to really change their lives. Okay. He's just really smart. So we have his head comes up, comes around. Even in this context, I want to make sure and I have diff decent, uh, decent anatomy and I don't want to go off on too many tangents. So like whenever you saw me draw a line here, you have that corner of the eye that matches up with uh, just below the top of the ear. So we're going to have that ear come around. It's going to be a little bit larger. You know, I don't want to, I don't uh, mess things up. And then we have the top of that shirt. It's going to come down because he still wears, he still wears his, you know, his best and his finest to work every single day. Maybe he has a small bow tie. Make that bow tie right there. Here's the other bow tie. There, on the side. Okay. And you have this long line. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll look at the, right now we're at a decent place in the roadmap, so I'll start drawing some of those lines that really help tie the face together. So this jowl, this large piece of skin is going to hang, and it's going to basically start right here and come around and connect at the bottom of his ear. So I'll start drawing a little bit harder to have that variation of line weight. Here we go. We'll have that come up. little bit and we'll have that bottom lip come here. You can even hear him say it. You can hear it. So I'll do that a lot of times whenever I'm creating a character. I'll, I'll develop a voice for it and I try and keep saying that in my head. It sounds ridiculous, I know, but it's just something that helps me develop. Even whenever I'm doing like animal characters, you know. So maybe he's got some bushy, you know, I had a teacher once that had these huge bushy eyebrows. So let's go ahead and draw some bushy eyebrows in. They're kind of reaching out, gonna slap you in the face if you, there we go. Okay, let's go ahead and draw a corner of his eyes. And he is older, so we're gonna have a few wrinkles here and there. You've had this baggage that comes down, it's sagging a little bit, right? Let's go ahead and draw that, okay. A little highlight in there. Good. So you can definitely see he's not a villain. <laughs> you know? Okay, let's go ahead and draw this. He's got a few wrinkles that come around. And his hair, it's not long, but you can tell at one point in time he may have been a hippie. So he wears his, he's still hanging on to those few little morsels and nuggets of hair in the back. Okay, let's go ahead and draw in his glasses. Very large ocular instruments here. Let's go and do this side. Black rimmed, of course. And what we'll do is we'll have that come here because I don't want to mess up the silhouette. And also, I don't want a tangent. So you see how that nose comes in? I don't want to draw that on the same tangency. So, because that'll create a tangency. And whenever you have that, it basically, instead of having overlapping lines, you have lines that connect and it puts them on the same plane. And this glasses, the glasses right here are basically, here, we'll do this. They're on a different plane. There we go. So and then we'll draw and we'll shade a little bit right here. And a little bit at the bottom. I'm going to get a little bit right here and a little bit at the bottom. Okay. All right. And maybe he's got some little liver spots here. He's got a couple sun spots here. Let's 
go ahead and shade that in. Okay, again, we want a few wrinkles here and there. We don't want to overdo it. <clears throat> okay, have a couple things down here. Flesh out his bow tie a little bit better. So this would be a character for like an education educator. You know, very easy read. You can definitely get that. Pretty simple whenever you look at it. Okay. And you notice a lot of times I'll come back and I'll draw these these uh, lore, sort of uh, squiggle. They look like squiggle, but there is a reason behind that. I do that so it gives me an understanding this is a plane, this is a form. So I might come back and I might put a little shading on the bottom. So it helps me whenever I start doing that, it helps me sculpt. I sculpt the drawing. There we go. And here's a couple wrinkles here and there. And just like that. I had a comment today. Uh, I woke up this morning and, you know, I do read the comments. I read the comments whenever I get them. And if it, you know, if it a question, typically I'll answer it or you know, if it's a comment that, that is genuinely nice, I'll, I'll, I'll like it. This comment today was interesting. It said, um, what did it say? Something the effect of talking over the video and explaining things. Something to the effect of it was obnoxious. Um, and, you know, I can appreciate all comments, but there was a tone to it that I just didn't, you know, I didn't really like. Um, you know, I, I definitely welcome all comments, but this one was, you could tell it was a troll. <laughs> he was just wanting to get a rise out of me. And, you know, I've had people tell me that they like the comments. Some are like, you know, you need to shut up. So in that context, uh, for that particular video, I had to explain what was going on. So, you know, you can definitely tell a troll when one appears. So I didn't, uh, I didn't really respond or get the time of day. So if I don't respond to your video or your comment, just know that I read every single one of them. Okay, so we'll do one last one. Um, sort of a young person. Maybe he's just in college. Maybe he's, I don't know. <laughs> um, maybe he's just in college. Maybe he is just off the farm. Maybe he is young and he's being molded and primed and propered by his parents, so he's uncomfortable in his skin, um, you know, and, and definitely uh, somebody that doesn't have... Okay, so this is an example, will be an example of <clears throat> maybe, gosh, just one little character flaw, one little flaw that turns the character from being a friendly, open person to something maybe that you are questioning whether or not he's going to be a good guy or bad guy. Okay, so there we go. Um, we're going to do that. So we're going to design him exactly like what I said, somebody that's possibly friendly, but there's going to be something about him that you're going to look at and you go, no, I don't, I don't feel comfortable in trusting this person. Okay, so what I'm doing right now, again, starting out with that circle or oval or bean or whatever, and, um, you know, going through and figuring out what makes the most sense in the character development. So, like I said, he's going to have a flaw, and we're going to determine what it is here just really quick. So we're putting in, again, some of those areas and forming him in a way that, that again, hopefully it is clear whenever you see him. Um, so his hair. His hair has got to be cut and maybe... Not a crew cut, but I definitely want it to be kept. Okay. Get some, have this right here. Okay. Ears are going to be small. Person, he's not going to be a skinny mini. Um, you know, nowadays you really have to be considerate of those that uh, are a little bit larger. You obviously don't want to call him a big giant fat guy um, because, you know, people are sensitive about that stuff. So he is not a big giant fat guy. <laughs> He's just a larger individual. Um, you know, we all go through stages of life. I can definitely say that, you know, I am not as uh, quote unquote small 
as I used to be. I used to wear 29 inch. Now I'm upwards of 36, 38. So, you know, of course that's what happens um, whenever you're a little bit older. Your body changes and these are things that we go through as we get older. So enough about that. But he is a larger individual. As you can see, he doesn't have all the definition and all the points that maybe this particular person does. So he's a little bit rounder. And, um, you know, as I develop him here, we're going to also give him a little bit of a bow tie. So we're going to come up, down, good, comes here, okay. So now I want to concentrate on his eyes. So. Let's do this. Okay, so whenever you do stuff like this, a lot of times it's good to simplify your chain of thought. Whenever you first come at maybe a three-quarter portrait or a side portrait, you're thinking in terms of all these, these planes, all these elements that create the eye. So one of the things you have to consider, especially whenever you create a character like this, is going to be emotion. How is he going to emote? So what I do is I will think of like an emotion or a moment in time that's like a snapshot. So you can see how his head is tilted back a little bit. Maybe he's laughing. So let's go ahead, His it's tilted back a little bit. I'm gonna have this whole area, and I think of it like a mask. Think of it like a mask. Now, even though the brows can, you can change the brows, I can change mine in my physicality. I can make one go down and I can make one go up. Some people can't do that. So if you want to just simplify the emotion, you draw this mask right here. And then what I do is I draw that center line down. Okay, and then I have the nose, which is gonna be a little stylized again. It's not pointed and it's gonna have a little bit less structure, but it is going to still be recognized as a nose, right? Because whenever you fill, like if you fill up a bag and the bag loses its wrinkles, right? But so it's a, it's a, it's a larger mass. That's what happens with human beings when they put a lot of uh, you know weight on it fills out their their bag of mass. So a lot of the things you know maybe the nose is a little bit rounder, maybe the cheeks are a little bit rounder, like so. So we're gonna have again we're we're thinking about that flaw. What's the flaw? What do we want? Okay. So we're gonna have his mouth open. Okay. <clears throat> what is the flaw that's going to round out his character type as sort of like a villain? I haven't landed on it yet. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have that hair come around. You see that I'm 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 not drawing in the eyes right now because I haven't figured out what is going to be the flaw. What is the flaw that makes him sort of a a quasi-villain that you don't want to trust him. What is it going to be? What is it going to be? You know, sometimes you can maybe have an earring. You know, right now he looks fun. He's like, yeah, I'd definitely like to hang out with that guy. He's he's friendly. Somebody maybe you'd see at a grocery store. You know, bagging your groceries, if you guys know that happens here. Probably happens other places too. Okay, so now I'm gonna get into, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? Let's go ahead and have his mouth not so wide. If you hear the growling, that's my stomach. My apologies. I can't believe I'm already hungry. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna have to have a handful of cashews. Okay, so let's go ahead and do his brows and his eyes. So let's have his brows come up. Okay, this one comes around. Maybe that one's a little bit higher. Draw these cavities right there. Ocular cavity, it helps me sometimes to draw the entire ocular cavity because then I know where I can place the eyeball, where I can place the eyelid. Okay. Okay. OK, 
Okay. He's got his teeth. Still drawing light. Okay. A lot of times it's, it's best just to draw the entire shape of the teeth where instead of drawing individuals. And then what you do is you come back and you just draw a little indication here and there. So let's go, oh, I gotta know what it is. You can have a missing tooth. I'm going to draw this a little bit darker. Okay, go ahead and shade this in. So suddenly, with that tooth removed, let's give him a little bit of a... of a butt chin. Yeah, that's my stomach. So I'll shade that in a little bit. I'll darken that in right there. Okay. So now you can see, even though he's a friendly looking chap, something has happened that has put him in a precarious position to where he lost his front tooth. And being as old as he is, <laughs> you know what I could do? Here, I'll do this. Just to show you just one little element, how one little element changes the entire character type. So right now, Something's going on. You're not quite sure. Right? Something's going on. You're not quite sure until maybe I'm going to do the hair back here really quick and I'll finish this up because we're running out of time. Okay. Okay. Go ahead and shade that in. Okay. Shade that in, shade that in, shade that in, shade, 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 shade. Okay, so now what if I give him a nose ring? <laughs> See how that completely changes the concept of the character? And it's so out of place, it doesn't make any sense. So we're gonna leave it out. <laughs> it actually is disturbingly, uh, it just doesn't work. So, or maybe, instead of having that nose ring, the bags, so we give him bags under his eyes. You know, we all suffer from some type of baggage if we don't sleep. So here we go, just that little element right there along with this makes him a little shifty shifty <laughs> okay and that's where I wanted to land with you guys today just explaining my thought process as I go through and develop characters and I think about different character types and shape language and all that other stuff and this is something that you can utilize whenever you create your characters or illustrations as you learn the process of drawing and what it means to observe life. I encourage you when as you go out in the world today, there's so many different types of people. You know, you can definitely kind of start playing games in your head as far as what they do, who they are, what they mean. You know, I love doing that. I used to people watch at the airport. That was fun. Until, of course, you know, security feet, security stuff happen, and then you can't go and sit in the airport <laughs> and just draw. 
At least you could, I couldn't a few years ago. I had security. What are you doing? Uh, I'm sitting and drawing. You need to move along. If you don't have a flight here, move along. Okay. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you guys. Thank you for visiting. Please like and subscribe and share. And as always, go out and observe and have some type of interaction with society today that is positive. Thank you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.